Hi, this is Josh from Sweet Tree Productions. Today we're going to show you a little bit about Avalite's macros and their a little bit about their static playbacks and mobile wing windows and how you can kind of make them work to what you want to do. So what we're going to do on our Titan window, you can see I've kind of I've pulled up the the show library again from our other video and I went into a little bit about how useful all these sets of macros are and how there's a lot and there still are a lot um, and you can create more we're not going to do that today just because of j mostly because of time purposes but what you're going to really do they have almost every macro I think you could need in this little list unless you just want to create more but a lot of them a lot of the most useful ones that I've found are kind of these here and I've put them in there in their macros window to kind of give you quick access to them. So a few we talk we haven't really talked a little any about blind mode, but essentially what blind mode does is you can get into blind mode and you can create kind of whatever mostly for if you're going back to uh back to our palettes if you're thinking god I need I need something I need my Mavericks to be, I need them to point straight down. So what they're going to do, and you can't see mine right now, we're going to set it up a little, a little position. And while I'm doing this, anything else that I already had going, if I have a queue going somewhere, if I have a chase going somewhere, whatever I have going on, is still going on and nothing I'm doing is changing that because I'm still in this blind mode so you can go in and you can create yourself I'm just gonna call this Maverick down and I've I've went back into kind of programming mode where I can just take this and do whatever I want with it with whatever idea I had to go with it you can use this for positions, colors, gobos and beams. If you're needing to make shapes, you can make a shape if you kind of have an idea of how it's going to work and how you can mess with it with all the settings that are down here that's in our shapes video. You can you can kind of do that and save it wherever you can rework some stuff with your playbacks, whatever you kind of need to do in blind mode to kind of keep yourself going with the show. And then you can go back and you can do this a few other ways but this has been kind of the easiest way I've found is you can fade out of blind back to live in three seconds by just pressing this button and what's happened now is since I've done that and I actually clicked on all those all those uh, palettes and everything my Maverick is now pointing straight down and it's just white and that's just because it's that's what the last information it really knows that I did with it was and so that's that's a really useful one where you can really kind of get into get into what you need to do with your map with your uh, whatever you're doing in blind mode Another one that I've found is kind of useful are, are these kind of three uh, and also these two as well. These three are palette fades and all they really do is they change your master palette fade from what it's normally in which is zero seconds which would just and what we'll do we'll go back to this window and we'll click on these hide these cells again and we'll find our color mix so if you'll watch this down here as I go through and change colors on the beams you can see 
that it instantly pops from red to green and back again and such. So what these what these macros are really useful for is if you want if you want those to go a little bit slower, I'm just going to go to 0 0.5 seconds at the moment. It's not going to make a huge difference, but you'll see a little bit you'll see a little bit happening kind of down here where it'll fade fade from one to the other. So right now we're green. We're going to go back to red and you can see over half a second it fades from green to red and back again when I click Maverick being green. The three seconds has been the one that I've found kind of looks the smoothest. And you can see that here. Hide these cells again just to make sure. So we're in green. And you can see over three seconds it changes from green over to red. And then I click beaten green again and it does it back again. You can do this a few other different ways. Uh, whether it's in if you're building a queue whether there's there's some other ways to do it that we'll get into kind of a might do a tips and tricks video where you can have a few different things that you can do with that so that's we'll set that back to where it was this is a little bit more useful if you have a bunch of mul uh, multiple fixtures of maybe the same kind maybe a, a few different LED pars what it'll do is when you're in a hundred percent which is its its basic form again what it'll do is it'll change everything over the same amount of time and at the same time if you change to palette overlap what it's gonna do is if you have your like we have our uh, we'll go back to our fixtures and groups page and open up not open I'm sorry we'll go to edit times and we'll bring up this one and our fixture order so we had these set from one two three essentially what it'll do is if you change a palette color on these three fixtures or on these six fixtures I'm sorry what it'll do is it'll change the first one first and then over a certain amount of time this one will start to change and then this one will start to change and what that can kinda do is it can kinda create a a nice little fade-in fixture, fade-in kind of color change where it changes from outside in, which is kind of nice. I've, I've enjoyed that with some of our front wash, some of our uh, different just LED stuff where it can change really smoothly. They have several different, uh, we'll kind of we'll scroll down to them. They have several different select options you can select one in ten one in three all that kind of stuff you can, they have select even select odd select if different things along that line uh, to make it kind of easier to get what we'll do we'll do it this way so we'll go back to this page I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit and we'll do this so what it's gonna do you can select even and it's just selected those three and that's just because of how I have my my group laid out and uh, you can have some different select options with those macros which is which is nice if you uh, if you have a group that you like to work with and you can, you can resize this macros window as well to kind of however you need it to be to fit any that you want so you can have a select even select odd select one in ten two in ten whatever whatever you need this tap tempo button has been kind of useful for uh, for some of our speed masters we haven't gotten into yet, but I've just kept it there to uh, kind of help out fill out the ranks. These reset all masters has been kind of nice. You can see if I if I have all three of these group masters up and select that, it'll just release them straight off. You can change the release time. A few different ways we may change we may show something on that later you can do same thing with this this will be this is your playbacks kind of area and what you can do 
is anything you have on here that's just a playback. When you release playbacks faders, it'll just release that off. And this will release all playbacks no matter where they are. So if you have uh, if you have something on your mobile wing and your down here and your playbacks window, when you click this, it'll release all playbacks no matter where they are. These have been kind of cool for uh, we we like our our executor buttons, and uh, they've been kind of useful for that. And I think what I'll do is I'll go over to this workspace window, not that one. I'm sorry, this one. And uh, I think what they've been most useful for is you can see we noticed when we first got them in that they had these pages on these playbacks and executors. Um, we never really could figure out kind of how to how to change that page. Uh, there's not really a hard key set anywhere on the console. Um, it doesn't. There's not a page change on this on this window anywhere. You can see I'm, I'm going to kind of go through the options. There's not really just a page button over here or a page button, a page change button over here. What you have to do, you can see I've got a few things saved here. What you have to do in order to change that, change those pages, I'm going to copy. I'm going to select those two macros. You can select them both at the same time. And I'm going to change them over to this this area which is also my macros and executors at the top of my console so I moved these here now and this is just where I like to have them you don't have to put them here this is just where I put them to uh, to keep up with them have them always be in the same place like I'll show you in a minute so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make these you know, change the name of these to where they're a little bit easier to keep up with what I'm doing. So you can see it says static plus one and static minus one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make those stay in that place. And you can see why this will be useful because you can almost use your macros at your macro buttons at the top of your console as kind of a as kind of a page button once you do it, but you can't just do it, it doesn't just do it automatically which is part of the reason I've left this window open. So what we're going to do, you're going to go to Playback Options, you're going to go to Static Plus One, and you're going to go to this Handle Paging, and you're going to change it to Locked. And you're going to do that on this one as well. And what that's going to do, you can see I can now change whatever pages I have just kind of based on these page buttons I've made. You can do that with on the console, you can do that with these buttons, your uh, macros and executors buttons, you can also do that on your mobile wing. I, I tend to put them, put them kind of in the same place on those macros and executors. So uh, that's just kind of an overview of the of the different macros, of the different ways you can use these little static playbacks and ex executors pages, that kind of thing, and your mobile wing pages on your executors. And uh, that's just kind of how we do it, how we like to do it, and uh, it's been it's been good for us. So, but again, they have all these macros you can work with, and you can see now that I've I've saved those to my static playbacks. They're now here in the show library. Again, they have so many macros they're so useful but these are just some of the ones that I've found that have been the most useful for us so what we'll uh, what we'll do now is just uh, we'll end this video here and we'll show you something else in another video here soon thanks for watching